Hey guys, and welcome to View and a Brew with Gaz. Today we'll be working on some Blood and Plunder English Militia. This is one of the blisters that came in the starter set. I showcased it the other day, and having looked at the community, decided in the end to go with this miniature. I chose this one specifically due to the pose. I really like how he's aiming down the musket barrel. It gives a real feel of them being on ship and engaging with another force, or even on land. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can look over some of the details. One thing I really like is the smaller metal base that comes at the bottom. It's textured with wooden planking. I will say that I've attached it to a plastic base with a bit of super glue just to get it started and give me a, a better way of holding the base within the Citadel hand holder that I have there. Loads of detail on this guy. And we're going to bring it all to life with quite a flat colour scheme and mainly using contrast today because I wanted to see how he would turn out. The first colour we'll be using is Citadel Colour Contrast Wildwood. And on the same wormwood, if you've been on a few of these, you'll, you'll notice when I keep slipping up. Thankfully, today was a good day. This is quite a dark brown that has lots of pigment, but I believe it to be a really nice starting point for these wooden planking sections that are underneath his feet. Now bear in mind, this is quite a large area and it's a mating surface with his footwear. I wanted to start here so if, if I make any mistakes I can easily correct them by just re-base coating the shoes where I get the brown onto. Uh, I think I'd be going for a maybe a black edge rim to the base. I kind of like how that separates the colours up. But we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, this stuff's really good and it's going into the recesses nicely. It always helps to have this level of texture detail, but the wildwood works in a number of places, and for me, I really like it for dark leathers as well. I can bring it up with some other highlights using layers, so I'm going to put it into some other areas of the model to tie it into the base colour that we've just done. To start with, we'll be doing the shoulder strap that runs to the sword that he carries. After that, we've got the wooden stock on the weapon. There's a nice separation line here between the metalwork and the woodwork. It gives you some as an easy reference to work the brush around, get it to the right angle, and get some really nice clean lines. It's good to see them putting in this much effort to what is one of their original sort of sets that came out when it came to starter sets. And recently they've gone into Kickstarter and done some plastic miniatures. So these are only going to get better, guys. Around his waist, we've got a belt and a couple of pouches. So again, tying colours together, we get them panelled out as well. Let's have a quick look at him. Yeah, pretty happy with that. And you can really see the different tones and colours in the base look. Lots of texture, lots of detail. It's quite a good start. I'm happy with how this is coming together. The next colour we'll be applying is Citadel Colour Contrast Flesh Terrors Red. I generally go with a brighter red, but for this guy I wanted quite muted tones. Um, I kind of believe that in the pirate era, you know, dyes weren't what they are now. They weren't as bright and as strong in colour. So I decided to go for the darker red for this very reason. The next decision is where to put it on him. I started out with what is essentially... Well, I want to say socks, but I don't think there were socks back then. So whatever the uh, tights or whatever he's wearing down there, they got a layer of red. It's, this is later now when I find out it's actually skin, and hopefully it works when it all comes together, we shall see. To tie the red to the rest of the miniature, I brought the colour up into the edging on his coat. Again, this has got a nice degree of separation, so it gives some clean areas and some clean lines for me to work with. I've been thinking about what the contrasting colour will be. I've got an idea, but let's wait and see. With those edge works done, I move on to the what is essentially a large cuff that's curled back upon his forearms. These also have some form of stitching and what looks like buttons on them as well. So we'll be coming back to them a little later. When I looked at the hat, yes, this is a good looking hat. 
there's lots of curves and layers and there's almost a, a type of um, a bandana section around the, the top as well probably to keep it on during the windy season <laughs> but uh, I wanted to keep the contrast going all the way from pretty much the lowest part of the model to the top so I used the red up here as well on the underside of the hat this time rather than the upper surfaces which I'll come back to later as we have a look around the model now you can see where we got that red into lots of places we also did the collar and you can see the piece on the top of the hat I was talking about next up we have Col Citadel Color Contrast Black Templar so I looked at his footwear not really sure of the times um, this, I did a bit of research on this to try and find some genuine images but it's quite sparing um, when you do some of the searches so I went with a simple black as in some form of leather for the shoes um, wanted to keep the tones quite muted and quite dark on this model um, that really ties in as a good start point and it helps you see the base a bit more all those lovely details so the next stage we'll be using Citadel Color Contrast Apocrypha very white now where the cuffs curl back there's actually some sleeve showing on both sides uh, as well as a couple of little tassels here and there there's two center pieces coming down from sort of a neck piece and I wanted these to be a form of white but not the really bright clean white that we'd expect so using the apocryphary white to add in some grays was an easy way of balancing those colors and developing some shadow and some shade on them as well I did the initial layer, let it fully dry and then apply the second layer in the end for the next stage we'll be using Citadel Color Basilicanum Grey I think this is what I'm going to be using for my contrasting colour I'm not sure quite yet if it's just going to be the trousers or we're going to transition it all the way through the jacket and up to the hat we'll see how it goes on this first layer one thing I really like about this is it's really picked up the recess as well so all the lovely details and creases show with just a single layer as you can see, yeah, I pulled the trigger. We're doing the jacket and we're going to do the hat. I was really happy with the greyish tone rather than a dark black tone that this has developed for me. But I am very aware that I need to push and pull this around before it dries too much so I don't get no staining and to make sure that it's not too dark in those recesses. So I'll be working it quite hard and getting it into the right places and just pulling away excess and moving it around as much as possible so it gets the look that I'm after. The lower parts of the jacket done, I start up on the shoulder section essentially and move through to the back section. Um, I'd already started on the arm and to be honest this area's got a lot less detail, there's less ridge work, there's less folds in the cloth so here I spend a little time just trying to push and pull it around to get a smooth colour. The hat was a joy to paint. Look at it. Loads of flat surfaces, just sweep the brush around. I've got a clean edge with the red sort of bandana piece that ties around it as well. The top part was very easy. Again, one thing I really like about these models is it's almost a thought process. So you can just literally build colours up the model to achieve a final finished miniature. Oh, went out of shot. That doesn't happen too often. Hopefully it won't happen again too much. <laughs> so looking in at the, we talked about the tassels on the forearm sections. I was going to do them a sort of white or look at some other colours. But with the greys and the reds and the muted tones again, I just tied it in. Next up I'll be using Citadel Layer Auric Armour Gold. Yep, yeah, it'd be a pirate. There needs to be some gold. So thinking of doubloons and coins, I wanted him to show a little bit of wealth. Admittedly, they probably didn't have anything and they definitely didn't slow it and sew it into their clothing. But, ah oh well, mine does. <laughs> I move around the various areas that have these small circular buttons. Just panelling out with this gold. And to be honest, I needed to mix it up quite a bit to get a good, even mix of the gold. Uh, I ended up stirring it rather than just trying to shake it. With that, I also then attacked the hilt of these, well, let's go with it, a cutlass. I suppose it could be any form of sword, to be honest. Looking at it, 
I'm not an expert in swords, therefore I'll call it a cutlass. Pirates I have known in films generally have cutlasses. Although, saying that, these are English militia, so maybe they're not quite pirates for the UK and Britain, but they could definitely be seen as pirates to some of the other nations at the time. So we panelled them all out, and we've got all the colours where we want them to be as a start point. Next up, we're using Citadel Colour, Contrast, Film and Flesh. I was thinking about which sort of flesh tone I wanted on these guys. Because there'll be not only this gentleman, but there'll also be some other miniatures from this range coming in the near future. And I wasn't sure if this was going to be too light in tone. I mean, these guys are going to be on deck a lot. Obviously, very little cover. They'll be on the ships a lot. So I imagine them to have a, a certain degree of um, tan to their skin. But, you know, I don't want them to be misread in the sense of... You know, we painted some uh, North Africa minis for Spectre not so long back, and we went really dark with some of the tones and then brought them up to some mid tones and some light tones. So I started out with the Gulliman Flesh basically so I could see where it was at and if it would work for this particular force. I'm happy to say that it did. Uh, I touched in some areas twice and pushed to some edges to a basically to achieve some additional shadow. One thing I've seen quite recently from a friend is he could use some of the contrast paints on golds to achieve the shadows. Now, I haven't tried this before, so I thought this being, you know, not too heavy in golds, it's not like it's got it everywhere, it'd be a good time to test this out. So here we go, just touching up around the buttons to, to provide some shadow to its edges, and working around the cutlass as well to get some real definition and some transitions and to be honest once i've done it it really took the edge off the gold but added a nice dark depth to it i was very pleased next up using citadel layer eshing gray now for this is mainly for the highlight of the gun to be honest um, i'm quite happy with how the model's looking overall and it's something that's going to take me, well, we're pushing, coming up on around two hours at this point. So not a huge amount of time, but it is just about being quite neat. I'll probably end up doing a second layer with a lighter grey. I also wanted to touch up what looks like the scabbard. It could be the sword blade, but with it being quite thick, I wanted to suggest it to be a scabbard rather than a sword blade. So we do a bit of hard hedge eye lighting, and we do a little bit down the centre as well at the beginning just to even it out. To continue this highlight we'll be using Citadel Layer Dawnstone. This is kind of one of the things I really like to use. I'm going to touch up the handle area now that runs into the cutlass and the guard for the hand. Then I think we'll do a little bit of this as well onto the scabbard in, probably to a lesser degree than we just did, maybe to like two thirds of it from the bottom to the top. And I'll probably change it and do an angle as well. Um, I want to establish those edge highlights a, a little more, but mainly towards sort of the bottom two thirds. So we're getting some form of light transition, but not a huge amount. Here we're just going to panel it out a little bit without going all the way to the top on the inboard. And then just a final once over on the, uh, the gun barrel at its highest points as well from both sides. I do it from both sides to try and keep it as even as possible. And then I touched up some of the flintlock mechanisms as well. But yeah, he came out really nice. So having given the model a once over, because it's always worth doing that, I decided to go to Citadel Layer Scrag Brown. There's a lot of detail and a lot of texture to the planks that are under his feet. So I wanted to highlight some of those areas up. Basically, I'm just going to touch up some edges, fill in some center sections, and make it look like there's some variation to the grain and the wood. This is fairly straightforward stuff, to be honest. But it should add a little bit of, you know, color pop from the base. As we said, the pirate himself is in quite muted tones, 
the base I don't want to outshine him and the fact that it's very even in its disposition and what's there means that it should work out quite nicely and sort of frame well as well as an opposite colour. That's him done. This is one of the quicker projects that I've had to do recently. A uh, little over two hours, predominantly using contrast paints. And I think it just goes to show that with good levels of detail, what you can achieve. We could go back over this with some layer colours if you want, if I wanted to take it to the next stage later. But for this model and where it's at right now, I'm actually very happy. Thanks for joining me today for this episode. If you want to see more of the team's content, why not like, subscribe and hit that bell. As for me, I guess it's time to grab a fresh cup of tea. But more importantly, keep painting those minis guys, and we'll see you in the next one.